What's going on, comicbook.com? I'm Jim Viscardi, and we are here from San Diego Comic-Con 2023, and with me in the studio, David Esmalshi and Todd McFarlane. Guys, welcome. Hi. <laughs> hey, thanks for having us again. Uh, he's a, this is a KG vet over here, Big Bad Jim. He's here every year. So uh, thanks for having us. Uh, no, of course, guys. Um, we're here to talk Nights for Samurai, and I need to know how this comes together. Give me, I, I, give me the genesis. Of I'm this. still putting my head around it, Jim. It's crazy to me. I have been a fan of Todd's for a very long time, and I have had an idea for a very long time. In my imagination, the reality of combining the worlds of feudal England and feudal Japan in a time of magic seemed like something that just wouldn't stop infiltrating all of my waking daydreaming time and thinking mm -hmm. about story and thinking about the kinds of stories I want to tell and the kind of, you know, conflicts that I want to see on the pages of a comic book. And so I had this idea and luckily I have a friend who I've collaborated with creatively for a, a while who is, uh, works for Todd, a uh, wonderful guy named Sean Canino and Sean, um, and I were talking and I said, is there any chance that I could possibly present something and he said of course what's the idea and uh so he sent it to his boss and then, and then uh, the follow-up of that was i mean you know you know besides me being me i'm also the president of image comic books right, right? and so we're always constantly looking to expand our line of titles and stuff and when david sort of pitched it that i just went what wow. i mean it sounded big and epic which mm -hmm. is Again, it, it it sounded like almost like he was pitching something like sound like a film, not a comic book, which is cool because I could I could envision it as I'm going, oh man, I'd I'd want to read this and watch this as I'm closing my eyes on it. Um, and so as he put more and more details on it, and then gave some of the backstory on mm -hmm. it, which to me, again, the action and the epic part of that I, you could argue is sort of kind of easy for us when we're doing action movies, but why do you care about the action, sure. right? Why is any of this relevant? And David, who's been doing a lot of great writing, been in the comic books too, so mm -hmm. it's not like he's a, a novice here, uh, just it came and I want, I, I got, I got smitten real quick with his idea going, <laughs> yeah, we should, we should do this. I think this, I think this is cool because I, I, I want to, I want to see it myself. So if nothing else, there's going to be at least one sale, right? <laughs> Dave, I'm sure David buy one for himself. Uh, so we'll have at least two. So, so, so David, what, what do uh, what do notes from Todd look like? Uh, first, first of all, can I just say how surreal it is to be sitting here at San Diego Comic Con with you, Jim, on comic book, and sitting next to Todd and hearing him say all that. Thank you, thank you. Um, it was uh, a nerve wracking that first pitch and mm -hmm. getting the chance to talk. And I'm so grateful that I had spent so many years thinking about these characters and all of these ideas. And so, um, honestly. The, the wonderful thing um, about embarking on a new collaboration with not only somebody that's a creative hero to you, but mm -hmm. somebody who knows uh, the this space um, better than practically anybody else on earth mm -hmm. is that he pushes me to find new ways not only to I me mean, really supported my ideas about the world building the sure. characters yeah. i had explained a lot of my kind of philosophies and ideas which i felt would live in the the subtext of the story mm -hmm. and allow the characters to really have um some dynamic uh growth over the course of the story but the way that i communicate with a team collaboratively mm -hmm. and the way to communicate my ideas to say my artist um, is something that I've up until this point in my journey had limited experience with. And I have a very specific way of writing with, say, my art artist partner on my Count Crowley series. Sure. For this journey, I needed to find a new way to convey my ideas to how I could script them so that then I could give the artist not only the inspiration that he was going to need, but also the clarity of my vision that was strong enough that still gave him room to be the artist that he is. Mm -hmm. And Todd kind of step by step has coached me through how to how to shape my words in, in scripting mm -hmm. to then get it to the artist and feel like we're giving them just enough so that then the artist has that freedom to go in. And that was, it's been really... Uh, important to me as a writer because i always feel like what's what's the point of taking on something this you know scary unless obviously i want to make an amazing story but if i don't grow 
And sure. I'm growing a lot in this process. So, uh, and I'll give you the four second answer to that. <laughs> it, it was at some point you just got to trust. Oh, hold the creative. on, Todd. You're going to give a four second answer? Yeah, no, this might be the first time <laughs> in our history. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to trust the creator, right? right. So I, because I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. I've got an idea. I'm excited. Trust me on this one. And so I heard it and I'm going, it's his idea. Right. It's his concept. He's been living with it. I'll trust him. My job then at that point is to just help guide some of the stuff. And then the odd time, a little tweak, but it's David's driving this thing. I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm, I'm basically a cheerleader to some extent <laughs> to get the results that I know are sitting in his head. Sure. Awesome. Uh, David, why don't you give us a bit for, for those who may be watching this and are hearing about the project for the first time, give us the, the elevator pitch kind of thing. Sure. And, and, and the one thing that you think uh, you're really excited for fans to see when they read the first issue. Absolutely. It's the 16th century. And in a fictional reality based on true human history, a time of dragons, magic, the supernatural, and a warrior class that lives under a feudal class, we've got feudal England, and feudal Japan coming together in a way that both sides of this battlefield are under uh, the impression that the person on the other side of the battlefield is something that that may or may not be true. And when these forces come together for the first time, I am dying for readers to turn that page and see the first time a katana and a broadsword clash mm -hmm. in this epic way with skies that could be full of creatures that um, you know you've never seen before get to come to life in the pages of a comic book like this. So that's that's that that moment. I'm really I'm so excited for people to get to know these characters. Hopefully, get to really care about them, and then all of a sudden see a knight and a samurai face to face on a battlefield. <sighs> I, it, pretty awesome. I got to imagine when you're scripting that and then then the art comes back in. <gasps> <laughs> that, like, it's that, the best. like those feel like the magic moments. They are. Right? And I'm so lucky because with Todd at the helm of all of this, mm -hmm. I get access to talent um, of the next level that um, I'm working with just a brilliant, brilliant artist who is half a world away, which is really interesting thematically considering I'm making a story about people that have language barriers or distance barriers. And here I am working with this genius mm -hmm. who is in Rome. Uh, and yeah, the first time he sent me his sketches of the characters based upon just the, the Bible that I had written out for all of the descriptions of all the different characters. Um, I just sat in my office for the full afternoon, just saying to my wife, I I won't curse, but I can't, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's the best feeling. It's what a gift as a writer to to have thoughts and ideas. I don't have the capability to use my hands to bring any of this stuff to life, mm -hmm. and um, to see that it's that's the that's the magic. It's a gift. I'm so grateful. Sure. And for for me, Jim, one of the big moments for me was uh, I understand the big concept of like knights and samurai. Just from a visual, right. it would just be really awesome to see it. Right? You just go, oh yeah, it's fun. It's fun. But now, other than the fun and it looks cool, what else? And as David kept talking about a story and what happened, that that the complication of you've got sort of this elite team on one side going after the bad guys and the other elite team going after the bad guys. And it seems kind of black and white at that point. Mm -hmm. You go, I get it, the Red Sox versus the Yankees. I right. get it. But then when a, later on when they find that maybe they've been used too, mm -hmm. that everybody's being sold a bill of goods, that it's like maybe your enemy may not be quite as bad. And oh, by the way, if they did what you're telling me, then maybe the enemy is a guy that sent me, but what does that mean? And if you come to that resolution and that, re and that revelation at that point as a group, and then you go, what we've been we've been used and then but once you say i did curse but once <laughs> once you say that and you basically are going to turn on your boss mm -hmm. potentially or at least ask questions sure. you become the outcast mm. and now like i i my whole life todd quit rocking the boat mm. you're the madman you're the guy stop it this is how we do things and so all of a sudden it's like there, it, there's a possibility that these two, the Yankees and Red Sox, actually some of them may have to actually join and turn and against their own, their own bosses. 
and they become the enemy. Mm -hmm. They thought each other was the enemy. They're now going to find out that they have now been put in a box. They become the enemy. And with what's flying on the sky and what's coming over the hill, uh-oh. And now this guy was going to kill two weeks ago is now the guy that basically I hope has got my flank mm -hmm. at that point. That's interesting stuff mm -hmm. with all the visual. The visual stuff it becomes the easy part in my mind. Right. That now you got all this stuff that then the characters start turning on you and the motivation and you're going, wow, that's super cool. And that was all the stuff that he was vomiting on the phone to me. Ver <laughs> verbal vomit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verbal no, vomit. I, I, that I, I, I yeah. got to say, I just love sitting next to David and just seeing the giant grin on his face yeah. as, as you're talking. It's, it's phenomenal. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I don't even got the words. And he summed it up perfectly. That is, that's what is at the heart of this. And I think all of us have felt that way at some time or another. You know, you've been the out, the rebel, the outcast, the guy who's done things your own way and has always been like, well, like I just was listening to your interview previously. And you're talking about like, what about putting people first for once? What about the, 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 the consumer? What about my comic book readers, my fans out there, like giving them a deal on something. It's not always about profit. And any of us who've worked in a situation where you feel at the end of the day, like, gosh, these people who are supposed to have my back, sometimes I feel like I'm getting a duped I feel like i'm getting used <laughs> and take that to the extreme right. you know great power often has been you know abused by manipulating people into believing that other people are their enemy when they're not right you know we see that through race you see that through class you see mm -hmm. that through nationality all these different things religion even you know well that's your that's your enemy and if you and if you're focused on that you're not going to see what we're twiddling up here um and so it, this is the, also again the perfect boss to have on this show who goes Yes, I love these rebels. I love the way that they're gonna, you know, break the rules to to forge a better, you know, reality. Um, and so the support has been unending. Any question I ever have, I get an answer immediately, which is crazy when you think about how busy this guy is and how many things that he's making and creating and overseeing. Um, it's 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 an incredible creative laboratory. In no way have I ever felt like, oh, we got churning this thing out. No, it's like. How can we support your idea and take it to the extreme? Can I just say, there's a bit of a false positive here, right? <laughs> so so when you hang out with people who've been in Hollywood where it takes months and years and That's thousands true. of notes, that if you just do like a fraction of that, you look you look like this kindest person on the planet. <laughs> so he's being way, way too kind because I'm doing with him what I do with a lot of creative people. And the comic book people just go, Oh, it's odd. Well, just leave me alone where he's going, that's it? You've only got two notes? Like, oh my gosh, you're going to let me do this and we're going to get started in two months? Yeah. Oh my God. Like Hollywood people yeah. are like, don't even know see, that there's see, another see. world, that there's another world outside their window. Uh, so anyway, he's, he's, he's coming into the pool and finding it to be a bit of a uh, a revival, I think, on on the creative side for some of his stuff, which which I think a lot of people do when they come to mm -hmm. comic books. Right. Just they're the writers especially yeah. are blown away. Going, they give, I've gotten script and they give script and they go, "What's your note? Note? We got to go to the printer next week." <laughs> like, they're like, dude, we'll talk about it after, and you can work on fixing it, like, and making it better next issue, <laughs> right? Like, and they're like. And you can just see the look in their eyes. So there's no notes. We don't have time for notes, right? It. Yeah. Oh, they love it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for coming by. I really do appreciate it. For more from Comic-Con 2023, keep it locked in to comicbook.com.